Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at types of cyber attacks and specifically we will be discussing the supply chain attacks. There are six main types of cyber attacks. In the prior session we looked at network-based, host-based attacks, social engineering, application-based and physical attacks. And if you viewed the other recording you would know there are a lot of terms you need to be familiar with, definition, concepts. That's the bad news. The good news is on the CPA exam, the, you will be tested based on multiple choice questions, remembering. So you have to practice as many multiple choice questions as possible in order to be comfortable with this material. Farhatlectures.com can help you with this. Don't forget to practice your MCQs. Let's go ahead and get started. In a supply chain attack, what's going to happen is this. Rather than attacking the company itself, maybe the company is pretty secure, you will attack less secure elements in their supply chain to infiltrate and launch attacks on the primary target. So you cannot attack the company itself. So you would look at their suppliers and see if you can do what? See if you can find a weak element in the supply chain and you will attack that weak element. Or you would look at their suppliers and see if you can infiltrate their suppliers and by doing so, getting to the company, infiltrating the company. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. One method is embedded software code attacks. So when the company purchases a software, if you can embed some sort of a malware inside the software that they purchase. So this type of attack involves the deliberate insertion of a malicious code into the software or firmware by attackers. So the company purchased the software, the firmware, they were not aware of this malicious code. So it's hidden within legitimate software update or installation. So you cannot infiltrate the company, you infiltrate the software developer that's that that that's that's creating this software for them so once once compromised software is deployed now the 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 malicious code is in there and it's activated the malicious code can execute a variety of harmful action ranging from data exfiltration to complete system compromise the impact here is huge because the primary danger of embedded software lies in its stealth the company is not aware of it. And because it's already installed in their system, it has access to many assets of the company. Since the software is legitimately obtained and installed, these attacks will bypass traditional security measures. So organization will be unaware of the breach for a long period of time, which lead to extensive data loss, financial damages, and erosion of customer list. Why didn't you double and triple check that software? An example will be a software developing company unknowingly includes a malicious code in their latest update for a financial management software. When the businesses install this update, the code is activated, allowing the attackers to access financial transaction and sensitive data. So you could not attack the company itself, you attack the, the company that developed their software. Foreign sourced attack. In these attacks, product, software, or component source from foreign supplier, those will contain a hidden surveillance tool or some sort of a malicious functionality. And government or entities with significant control over manufacturing process can embed those malicious elements to conduct espionage or sabotage against other nations or foreign corporation. So what happened is this, you buy the product. Inside the product, it, there is some sort of a surveillance tool. So the impact of foreign source attack extends beyond individual companies because sometimes it might pose a national security threat and it could sour international relation between different countries. Because these attacks can lead 
to the compromise of sensitive governmental communication, intellectual property theft, and could potentially escalate into ge geopolitical tensions. So, for example, if a country exports smartphone with pre-installed surveillance tool and those phones are used by government official, well, what's going to happen is they're going to be able to intercept communication that's being made and this communication is sent back to the exporting country compromising sensitive communication. So this is an extreme example. Nevertheless, it could be a realistic example. Pre-installed malware on hardware. That's another way to do it. So you buy a hardware, you pre-install a malware on it. So attacker target the hardware supply chain by pre-installing malware on devices such as USB drives, smartphones, or network equipment. So these compromised devices, once connected to the computer at the company or the network, they would execute the malware leading to system compromise and data exfiltration. So, so if you could not get to the software, get to the hardware. So this sneaky nature of pre-installed malware on hardware makes it also dangerous because the company is not aware of it. It bypassed the perimeter defenses since the infected devices are often considered trustworthy. And this method could lead to widespread network infection, data breaches, and significant operational disruption. Once again, the idea here is you cannot get to the hardware of the company itself See if you can get to their suppliers. Another example will be a batch of USB drives given away at a trade conference contain malware. So, you, so employees are at a trade conference. You'll give them a USB um, to show them the latest product. They will install this USB into their system, and boom, you have you just downloaded a malware. When companies' representatives use these drives, the malware infects their corporate network, leading to data breach. Also, you can attack the vendor, the supplier, the strategy targeting key vendors or supplier within the supply chain. So by compromising those critical connections, those critical nodes in the supply chains, attackers will disrupt the production or distribution, inflict financial damage, and potentially gain access to the network of the targeted vendor's client. So vendor attacks can also have a cascading effect through the supply chain because it's going to affect multiple organizations. Production is halted, you'll have financial losses, um, compromised security across network, so on and so forth. So it's important for companies to do what? To build resilient and secure supply chain to mitigate those risks because your supply chain is part of your company. So you have to be careful who are your suppliers. Watering hole attacks is another form of indirect attack on the company. So attackers, what they do is they compromise popular websites or online platform. Like, let's assume there's a popular project management software or a popular forum for the industry, frequented by employees, vendor, uh, customers of the target organization. Let's assume a popular forum uh, where it's about the industry and employees of this company go to that forum to learn about what, what's the latest in the industry. So what you do, you'll go to that forum and you install some sort of a malware and you would hope that one of the employees that goes to that popular forum download this software or uses this project management software. So by exploiting third-party sites, attackers will deliver the malware if it's installed or conduct phishing operation. Basically, you would learn about empl their employees, you would learn about their customers to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. So the watering hole attacks exploit the trust employees place and visited sites of third party, making them effective for initiating widespread breaches. What you're looking for is some sort of a hole through that third party, third party network. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. In the context of embedded software code attacks, what is a key indicator that an organization should monitor to detect potential breaches? So if you have this embedded software code attacks, what are some indicators that this is taking place? Decreased software update sizes. Well, the size of the software update, it's not directly related to the, the embedded software code attack because you could have a small update and you could have this attack or a large update. So the size is, doesn't really matter. Unusual network traffic patterns. Um, well, that could be an indicator. There's an unusual 
traffic pattern let's keep this answer because unusual pattern can indicate unauthorized activities maybe someone someone is going in there to take the data out that could be a good answer choice let's keep it increased employee productivity you know you should be happy if you have an increased employee productivity uh, and that's not that's that should not be related if there is a uh, an embedded software code attack in your software uh, that those two are not related lower IT support ticket it means you you don't you're not really asking for support because it's working properly that's also not related B is the correct answer unusual network traffic pattern can indicate unauthorized activities such as data exfiltration associated with embedded malicious code what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures practice more MCQs on farhatlectures.com especially if you're studying for your information systems and control exam or any other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.